con l'appello di Garibaldi. Tutti i suoi figli, suoi figli baldi, daranno uniti fuoco alla mira, camicia rossa garibaldina. For centuries Italy had been the battleground of contending nations. It was divided into a number of petty states whose mutual jealousies made it prey to disunion and foreign exploitation. At the end of the 18th century, Italy was a collection of a number of separate Italian states, dominated by Austria. Napoleon conquered most of Italy, in the name of the French Revolution by 1799. He consolidated old units, and split up Austria's holdings. He set up a series of new republics, complete with new codes of law, and the abolition of old feudal privileges. Even if some of these states were created by the French invasion, and were just satellites of France, they sparked a nationalist movement. Nationalism and liberalism received a death blow in Italy, by the architects of the Congress of Vienna. The hopes and aspirations of the Italian patriots are dashed to the ground. Under the pretext of the principle of legitimacy, the principle of nationality was brushed aside. The old rulers were restored to their thrones, as far as possible. Sardinia got Piedmont, Savoy, Nice, and Genoa. Thus a powerful state was created in the southeast of France. Venice and Lombardy were given to Austria. The smaller states of Tuscany, Parma, Medina, and Lucca were given to the princes of Habsburgs. Naples was restored to its old Bourbon rulers. Instead of unifying Italy, the Congress turned it into a geographical expression. The dominant power in Italy was Austria, who from its vantage points in the north, controlled the peninsula. The impulse towards unity and liberalism received from Napoleon, could not be wiped by tyrannical repression. It drove the discontent of the people underground. Secret societies, notably that of Carbonari, were formed everywhere to spread the ideas of liberalism and nationalism. The organization most likely emerged as an offshoot of Freemasonry, as part of the spread of liberal ideas from the French Revolution. They first became influential in the Kingdom of Naples, and in the Papal States. In 1820, the Spanish people successfully revolted which influenced the development of a similar movement in Italy. Inspired by the Spaniards, a regiment in the army of the two kingdoms of Sicily, commanded by Guglielmo Peep, who was a Carbonaro, the army mutinied and conquered the peninsular part of two Sicilies. The uprising of 1820 in Naples seemed successful at first. In spite of the ruthless measures to eliminate the secret society, Ferdinand was faced with the fact that his own armed forces were infiltrated with Carbonari members. As such, Ferdinand I was forced into conceding a constitution for his kingdom. He left Naples after swearing an oath to the constitution, and quickly hastened to Austria. The victory, albeit partial, caused a lot of hope in the peninsula. The success of the Neapolitan Revolution encouraged other rebellions throughout the Italian peninsula. In the kingdom of Piedmont Sardinia revolutionaries, backed by eight infantry regiments, demanded that King Victor Emmanuel accept a constitution, he refused and abdicated in favor of his brother, Charles Felix. The new monarch was in Medina at the time. So Charles Albert became regent. Charles Albert granted a constitution, but acted without the permission of the new king. Forces loyal to Charles Felix joined with an Austrian army, and quickly crushed the revolutionaries. Charles Felix followed this by abrogating the short-lived constitution, and purging his army of disloyal elements. Ferdinand returned with an army of 50,000 men to put down the rebellion in Naples, this time he was sure that no Carbonari was in his ranks. They were met by a Neapolitan force of 8,000 men, which they defeated in the Battle of Rieti on the 7th of March, 1821. A few days later, the king returned to Naples in triumph at the head of an Austrian army. He dismissed the parliament and tore up the constitution. For a time, liberalism was crushed. Italian philosophers and poets played an important part in creating an intellectual revolution. Before unity could be achieved all states should be converted to the same political ideals. This task was very ably performed by men like Giuseppe Mazzini, Vincenzo Giuberti and Francesco de Sanctis. 
they were responsible for the new movement called Risorgimento or Literary and National Revival. It glorified the achievement of the old Roman Empire and inspired the present-day generation to achieve independence and unity. Mazzini was the prophet of Italian unity. Italy united, independent and republican was his all-absorbing passion and ideal. Mazzini stirred the people, kindled their enthusiasm. He prepared the ground where others worked with greater success. Vincenzo Giuberti was a clergyman, philosopher, publicist, and politician. He advocated a constitutional monarchy. In his most celebrated work, On the Moral and Civil Primacy of the Italian Race, he recommended the creation of an Italian federation headed by the Pope. Francesco de Sanctis was a literary critic whose work contributed significantly to the understanding of Italian literature and civilization. A liberal patriot, he took part in the Neapolitan Revolution of 1848, and for some years was a prisoner of the Bourbons. Giuseppe Garibaldi, the political disciple of Mazzini was a man of action. Rash and reckless, he never missed an opportunity to strike a blow for his country's emancipation. He never cared to understand either compromise or political necessity. It was he who cut away with his sword when diplomacy failed. Without him Italy would have not been made in 1860. The July Revolution of 1830 in Paris set in motion a series of insurrections along the Italian peninsula. The Duke of Medina, Francis IV, hoped to become King of Northern Italy by increasing his territory. Two Carbonari, Enrico Misli and Ciro Minotti put their trust in the Duke of Medina. New French King Louis Philippe promised revolutionaries that he would intervene in case of Austrian military intervention. But the Duke of Medina abandoned his Carbonari supporters, arrested Minotti and other conspirators in 1831. Minotti was executed, and the idea of a revolution centered in Medina faded. At the same time, several papal states rose in rebellion, adopted the tricolor in favor of the papal flag. The newly installed local governments proclaimed the creation of a united Italian nation. It prompted Pope Gregory XVI to ask for Austrian help against the rebels. The Austrian Chancellor Metternich warned Louis Philip about the dangers of French intervention in the Italian matter. Louis Philip withheld military help. The Austrian army began its march across the Italian peninsula, slowly crushing resistance in each province that had revolted. The failure of the uprisings of 1831 suggests that the program of the Carbonari had run its course. The prospect of Italian regeneration seemed very weak. In the 30s, three events occurred which lent great strength to the Italian nationalist movement. The first was the formation of the Society of Young Italy by Mazzini. He was Republican and Unionist and emphasized popular participation in the national struggle. He eschewed Jacobin and social revolutionary objectives. The second was the accession of Charles Albert to the throne of Piedmont in 1831. He was fiercely anti-Austrian and had the cause of Italy at heart. He gradually moved in the direction of moderate reform which was being preached by Gioberti. Lastly, it was the liberal Pope Pius IX whose reforming measures aroused the great enthusiasm of the people. He declared amnesty to political prisoners and exiles of the Papal States, and presented himself as a liberal Pope. It was at this turn of events that the revolutionary wave of 1848 swept over Europe. The revolution in Italy had a dual orientation, democratic and nationalist. A revolution first broke out in Palermo demanding reforms, Sicilian autonomy, and a constitution. A revolt for similar demands broke out in mainland Naples. Ferdinand II was forced to grant a constitution to his mainland, as well as his island kingdom. The effect on the rest of Italy was instantaneous. Popular demonstrations for the constitution occurred in Piedmont, Tuscany, and the Papal States. By March 1848 constitution and parliamentary governments were granted in all these principalities. Then came the national motif. The news of the revolution in Vienna and the flight of Metternich inflamed the nationalist movement. Revolution broke out in the northern kingdom of Lombardy, Venetia. On 18 March 1848, the city of Milan fought throughout the streets, raising barricades, firing from windows and roofs, 
and urging the rural population to join them. The populace was backed by the archbishop, and at least 100 priests joined in the fighting against the Austrians. This became known as the Five Days of Milan. The revolution forced about 20,000 Austrian General Radetzky's troops to withdraw from the city. Eventually, General Radetzky was forced to completely withdraw his troops from the two states. However, he was able to keep the quadrilateral fortresses. On March 23, 1848, Charles Albert of Sardinia Piedmont declared war on Austria. Prospects for a national war seemed promising, and he wanted to seize the initiative to preclude republican and democratic domination of the nationalist movement. Leopold II, Pope Pius IX and Ferdinand II sent troops to aid the Piedmontese army. This was instrumental in the Austrian defeat and the capture of Peschiera at the Battle of Goito. A few victories were won by the Piedmontese until the tide turned in favor of the Austrians. Fearing a religious schism between Austria and Rome, the Pope withdrew his troops from the war front. Tuscany and Naples followed suit. Albert was forced to sign a truce with Austria known as the Salasco Armistice. His army abandoned Lombardy, allowing the return of the Austrians to the region. In Rome, the minister Pellegrino Rossi was assassinated on November 15, 1848. This event triggered a democratic insurgency, and caused Pius IX to flee to the safety of Gita. There he was joined by Leopold of Tuscany, who was driven away by a similar movement in Florence. A constituent assembly elected by universal male suffrage, proclaimed the Roman Republic on February 5, 1849. Under Mazzini's influence, taxes were abolished throughout the Papal States, freedom of religion was established, and a large contingent of troops was sent to aid Albert in his fight against the Austrian Empire. However, these actions turned out to be counterproductive for the state. The major source of income was eliminated, and Rome was left extremely vulnerable to attack with the lack of sufficient troops at home. The Italian Revolution seemed to have been reborn. On 12 March 1849, Albert denounced the truce with Austria. Although supported by Roman troops, he failed to defend Piedmont against the Austrian army at the Battle of Navarra. He abdicated and went into exile. His successor, Victor Emmanuel II, was granted an honorable armistice, because the Austrians did not want a weakened Savoy monarchy, that could be exploited to the advantage of its democratic opponents. The Battle of Navarra was the beginning of the reaction. One by one the absolute dynasties were refastened on Italy. Sicily was reconquered by Ferdinand, and Leopold was restored to Tuscany. Pope Pius appealed to Napoleon III for help. The French president saw this as an opportunity to gain Catholic support. Despite an early loss to Garibaldi, the French, with the help of the Austrians, eventually defeated the Roman Republic. Pope Pius IX was escorted back into town and ruled under French protection until 1870. The national movement in 1848 had indeed collapsed, but not the sentiment of nationalism. The events of 1848 and 49 clarified the situation. The vault face of the liberal pope and failure of the Mazzini Republic had eliminated both federalism and republicanism as a solution. The solution that appealed was the leadership of the King of Piedmont. The sacrifices and efforts made by Charles Albert marked his dynasty standard bearer of the Italian cause. Despite Austria's pressure, Victor Emmanuel II refused to abrogate the constitution. Thus, Piedmont became a liberal oasis in the desert of despotism. Events took a new turn with the appointment of Camillo Benso, Count of Cava as the Prime Minister of Piedmont. During his sojourn to England, he had studied the English political system with great care. He took to journalism and edited a newspaper, The Risorgimento. He advocated liberal reforms in the Piedmont. Cava was a realist in politics. He clearly understood that Italian unification could not be achieved so long as great powers like Austria and France interfere. It became the cornerstone of Cava's policy to secure the sympathy and alliance of the great powers. To further this end, he sent the Piedmont army to the Crimean War against Russia, despite having no stakes in the Eastern question. The immediate gain to Piedmont was the admission of Caver in the Paris Peace Conference. Here Caver raised the Italian question before the assembled diplomats in the face of stiff Austrian opposition. 
Thus, the Italian question was converted into a matter of European concern. It raised the prestige of the Piedmont, and the moral gain was enormous. The next stage of Caver's policy was to win Napoleon III to the Italian cause. Napoleon III fought as Carbonara in Italy in 1831. Caver played on his nationalist sympathies. He was greatly helped in this quest by the Orsini affair. On 14 January 1858, Felice Orsini, with other Italian nationalists, attempted to assassinate Napoleon III in Paris. Caver pointed out that revolutionary crimes like this were the misguided acts of the ardent spirits, driven to desperation by the oppressive rule of Austria and Italian despots. His argument was reinforced by Orsini's dying appeal to the Emperor to deliver Italy. Napoleon was moved and the result was the Compact of Plumies. It was agreed that Napoleon III would join Sardinia in the event of war with Austria, and make Italy free from the Alps to the Adriatic. The rest of Italy was to be united in the federal structure under the presidency of the Pope. In return, France would receive Nice and Savoy. The alliance was to be cemented by the marriage of Victor Emmanuel's daughter to the Emperor's cousin, Prince Jerome Bonaparte. Having secured the French promise it became the policy of Cava to provoke war with Austria. He began extensive military preparation and provoked Austria by hostile tariffs, press attacks, and encouraging unrest in Lombardy and Venetia. But in France, there was little enthusiasm for war, while England suggested a European Congress to settle Italian affair. Caver in desperation contemplated suicide. But Austria foolishly stepped in and saved the day. Provoked beyond endurance, Austria sent an ultimatum demanding instant demobilization or war. Thus Austria appeared as the aggressor and played in Caver's hands. The allied French and Sardinian troops, aided by Garibaldi and cohorts of volunteers from all over Italy, advanced into Lombardy. Austria was defeated at Montebello, Palestro, Magenta and Solferino. Lombardy was cleared of Austrians, who took refuge in the famous quadrilateral forts in Venetia. Just when Venetia was within reach, Napoleon III suddenly called a halt. Without conferring with the Allies, he arranged a truce with Austria at Villafranca. It was settled that Austria would cede Lombardy to Sardinia, but retain Venetia. The rulers of Tuscany, Parma, and Medina were to be restored, who had been expelled by their subjects on the outbreak of the war. An Italian federation was to be formed under the presidency of the Pope. These terms were ratified by the Treaty of Zurich. There were many converging political and military reasons for Napoleon's third decision. The French losses had been heavy, and the Austrians were firmly entrenched in Venetia. Prussia threatened intervention in favor of Austria, as a decisive French victory would be detrimental to Germany's security. The clerical party in France took a menacing attitude when it appeared that papacy would suffer at the expense of Sardinia. Napoleon wanted a divided Italy under French hegemony. His aim was an independent Italy, not a united one. The acquisition of Lombardy was the first significant step in the unification of Italy. Caver was furious at the faithlessness of Napoleon III. He urged the Sardinian king to repudiate the treaty. The king declined and Caver resigned in a huff. Victor Emmanuel realized that the fate of Italy had passed out of the hands of diplomats into those of people. The future events proved him right. The north-central duchies of Tuscany, Parma, and Medina had expelled their rulers at the outbreak of the war. Moreover, the northernmost papal state Romagna repudiated the temporal sovereignty of the Pope. All these states established provisional governments and voted in favor of unification with Sardinia Piedmont. In view of strong popular feelings, Napoleon found it difficult to restore the expelled rulers. Besides England's policy, directed by Palmerston and Russell, was openly sympathetic to the Italian aspirations. Napoleon III was in a catch-22 situation. He could not support the annexionist movements in violation of the Treaty of Zurich, nor could oppose them in view of England's policy. 
Kava who had returned to office found a way out from this seeming impasse. He reopened the offer of Nice and Savoy to Napoleon, and secured his consent. As a result, Tuscany, Parma, Medina and Romagna were united with Sardinia Piedmont. Cava was criticized for surrendering Nice and Savoy. Nice was the birthplace of Garibaldi. He felt bitter that he had been made a foreigner in his own land. But it was a politic thing to have tied beforehand the hands of Napoleon with some of the spoils of Italian freedom. Close on the heels of the national movement in the north, there came a similar movement in the southern part of Italy. The Kingdom of Naples and Sicily was seething with discontent. The Sicilians appealed to Garibaldi who promised help provided the intended revolt took place in the name of Italy and Victor Emmanuel. Mazzini encouraged insurrection, and one of his principal agents, Francesco Crispi organized it. But its success depended upon two men, Garibaldi and Cava. Cava was in a conflict of calculations. To encourage a raid upon the neighboring state was an act outside the public law. It would encourage a quarrel with Naples and provoke the intervention of powers. Hence it was the policy of Cava to treat Garibaldi as an unauthorized and independent adventurer, and outwardly maintain an attitude of strict neutrality. On April 4, 1860, the revolution broke out in Messina in Sicily. On 6 May 1860, Garibaldi and his cadre of about a thousand Italian volunteers, the famous Red Shirts, sailed from Genoa. On 11 May, he landed near Marsala on the west coast of Sicily, practically under the protection of a British naval squadron. This semi-diplomatic intervention saved the expedition. It was part of the British contribution to the cause of Italy. Garibaldi defeated the Neapolitan army at Calatafimi and fought his way to the capital city of Palermo. Within three months he was the master of the island. He declared himself the dictator of Sicily in the name of Victor Emmanuel II. Never had such a rapid conquest by such a handful of men been known in the pages of history. Garibaldi refused the immediate annexation of Sicily to the Kingdom of Piedmont. He had his own plans for further military operations, and was impatient and distrustful of Cava's cautious diplomatic methods. In August, Garibaldi with much greater force crossed to the mainland of Italy. King Francis II of Naples fled to Gita. Garibaldi entered Naples in triumph and was hailed by the people as a second Christ. Garibaldi's brilliant successes presented to Cava an urgent problem of great complexity. Flushed with victory and encouraged with Republicans, Garibaldi thought on pushing to Papal States and even to Rome. But surely such an advance would bring the intervention of powers, especially France, as Rome was protected by a French garrison. Cava decided that the time had come to take the direction of events out of the hands of Garibaldi. He declared that Italy must be saved from foreigners, evil principles, and madmen. Cava resolved to anticipate Garibaldi, to invade the Papal States with the royal troops of Piedmont, and to defend Rome from Garibaldi. Seizing an excuse in a hostile movement on the part of the Pope, Cava ordered the invasion of the Papal States. Sardinian royal troops under Victor Emmanuel II defeated the Papal army at Castelfidardo and occupied Umbria and March. He then moved toward the south to meet the Red Shirts at Naples. Garibaldi was delayed by the resistance of the Neapolitan town of Capua. Meanwhile, plebiscites were held in Naples, Sicily, Umbria, and March. All states voted overwhelmingly for the union with Piedmont. Garibaldi outwitted by the diplomacy of Cava, but faithful to the king surrendered his power and his army to Victor Emmanuel. On November 9, 1860, in an imposing ceremony in the Palace of Naples, Victor Emmanuel was invested with the kingship of Naples and Sicily. The next day, Garibaldi returned to his island of Caprera, with a bag of seed corn for his farm, as his only spoil. On February 18, 1861, the first Italian parliament was held at Turin, and Victor Emmanuel II was proclaimed King of Italy, save Rome and Venice. Cava could not live to see the annexation of Rome and Venice as he died on June 6, 1861. Venetia was held by Austrians, and Rome was held by the Pope, with the assistance of the French army. Their fate was bound by the general international situation. 
When the war broke out between Austria and Prussia in 1866, Italy formed an alliance with Prussia. The Italian army was defeated at Costoza and the Italian fleet off Lissa. But the Prussian victory at Sadova made good for these defeats and compelled Austria to surrender Venetia to Italy. The war broke out between France and Prussia in 1870. The French regiments had been recalled from Rome. The Italian troops entered the papal territory and occupied Rome. A plebiscite was held which gave an overwhelming majority for the Union. In July 1872, King Victor Emmanuel II made a solemn entry into the new capital Rome. At last, Italy was united, a feat accomplished by the fervor of Mazzini, tact of diplomacy of Victor Emmanuel II and Caver, and the sword of Garibaldi.